Alright then, now that we have the Kronos key, we can head towards that stupid clock puzzle. And then we can go back in time and prevent Jill from ever having enlisted in this hellhole city in the first place. Eh. Actually, no, I don't think we're going to be that lucky. Uh, that being said, it's been a long time since I saw Back to the Future. Anyway, this card. But yeah, this puzzle coming up is one of two puzzles that are just so aggravating. Great rounds. Ah, stupid spider. Yeah, you listen closely. You hear their footsteps. Oh, oh. This guy's got a file on him. Mercenary's pocketbook. Hmm. It's only been three hours since the mission started, but the team is down to me and Campbell. The number of the zombies is far greater than we expected. There is no hope left for this city. We have already injected the antibody for the virus, but I'm not sure it will work. I don't know if I will survive. September 27th. We managed to reach the clock tower. Out of desperation, we robbed some wounded members of their weapons and used the surviving citizens as decoys. We were taught to do this in order to survive in the battlefield, but I never enjoyed it. However, a girl showed up at the clock tower before me. She is one of the survivors. She looks just like my sister before she starved to death. 28th, I wanted to evacuate as soon as possible, but the girl didn't. Her father insisted that he would leave the city where his beloved wife rests in peace. I really wanted to save the girl, but Campbell said, all I care about is our lives. That's how I felt before, but now... The clock tower has become a dangerous place. I don't want to make any more mistakes. Huh, umbrella mercenary. He seems he died trying to shield someone's daughter. Well, good, nice to see some mercenaries are honorable. Mm. You don't find many of those nowadays. Anyway, we have a ball, an obsidian ball, and a crystal ball. Yes, you gotta use these balls on the trays uh, that are in front of each clock in order to make the center clock change position in terms of the hands. The goal is to make the center clock uh, go to 12. Let's see, it's 9 o'clock on that one. Here's the thing. Certain balls and certain trays, they change the clock hands due to weight. Hmm. E of course, each ball has a different uh, effect on the clock, depending on which tray they're in. Uh, pretty much the crystal ball, left clock subtracts one hour from the central clock. Uh, in the middle clock, it adds one hour. The right clock, two hours. For the obsidian ball, left clock minus two hours, middle clock plus two hours, right clock plus four hours. In the amber ball, left clock minus three hours, middle clock plus three hours, right clock plus six hours. Fun. In short, you're going to have to do a lot of trial and error. And this will take up a lot of time, no pun intended. So, yeah, and the, the thing is, since this puzzle is randomized, you're not going to have any clear-cut way of figuring out what the solution is. Not unless you actually did the math in your head beforehand. Let's see... Nope. That didn't work. Okay, I think it's any ball from that. And there it goes. Yeah, I'm just I just again I don't don't like this puzzle. No, I don't. Oh, there's that. <sighs> yeah, did well trust me, it takes a while, but at least it doesn't take as long as that stupid puzzle at the end of the game. Hmm. That one I actually had to edit out. The water puzzle. <laughs> yeah. I had to edit out seven minutes of it. There you go. Obsidian in uh, the left clock. Yeah, this will do it. Then uh, the amber ball the really... in the center clock. And this crystal ball in the right clock. There! Well, I guess that's the solution for nine o'clock! You were saying? 
You know, the funny thing about the water puzzle is it seems simple if you have a good uh, eye for, like, patterns and whatnot. Well, the thing is, uh, more of that puzzle when we get to it. I'm just saying that uh, you have to change the, the, the uh, pattern itself, but the thing is, you gotta make sure it matches up perfectly with the sample. You have to have an eye for patterns. Well, like I said, the puzzle frustrates me. To the point where I can't concentrate. But again, just consider yourself lucky that I edited that out. <laughs> no one wants to see me struggle in that puzzle for seven minutes. Anyway. Now that we have both gears, we combined them to make the Kronos gear. So therefore, now we can make the bells ring. Oh yeah, we'll just for a little bit of flavor text. A mercenary's corpse. He must have died fighting. You know, it would have been scary if we actually found more corpses around here. Yeah, it would have even further reinforced the fact that this place is not safe. Stupid spider. Alright then. I should note this. There will be a boss fight after we uh, signal the bells. On. Yeah, after we ring the bells, it'll be a boss fight. For that one, you're going to want to prepare yourself accordingly. And by that, I mean, make sure you save. Unless you're feeling mm. gutsy. And I'm not feeling particularly gutsy. Because I know full well what this fight can um, entail. Especially since, obviously, your choice at the cable car will change how the, the fight will go. Hmm... I probably won't need the handgun. Actually, I will need it eventually, I think. But I think eventually I just settle for the, the grenade launcher. Let's see, where is it? Ah, here's the gear. See, more or less, I'm going to demonstrate how ineffective the mine thrower is in this fight. Yeah. So, yeah, more or less, take quite a few healing items, but don't take all of them. You still need some of them for the end game. Yeah. I got 42 grenades. I, mm, yeah, I might need to... Uh, what am I going to need? What am I going to need? I'm going to need some heavy artillery, obviously. So I'll take a shotgun, maybe. Well, like I can say, I'm very indecisive. Well, first and foremost, obviously, it's through this gear. There we go. Alright then, now that's taken care of, make sure we grab something, uh, ah, I guess I am taking the handgun with me. Hmm. Oh, and, obviously, save the game. Because only a crazy man would try to do this without saving. <laughs> Either crazy man or a person who has spent way too much time on this game. Like, say, the Japanese. Anyway. Right. Alright, let's grab one more thing. What we're gonna need, uh yes the shotgun. Alright, let's grab the mine thrower. And let's go. Boom. And and because they're louder out here. Yep, they're louder. Obviously. Alright then, let's head to uh, the courtyard. Mm. We, we just go there immediately. Thanks to the cutscene. Time for the Day Watch sequence. And by the way, folks, in a survival situation, never say it's finally over. It's finally over. God damn it, woman! This is a pure punishment. This is why you should never say that. Because otherwise, your hope comes crashing down. Or in this case, get shot down. No. Especially due to that guy. But yeah, never, ever say it's finally over. Because it never is. And just when you thought things could get any worse. Ow! Hi, Murphy. Jill. Uh-huh. Murphy's Law. Yeah, yeah, that. Uh, 
Oof! Ouch. Well, I'll take whatever backup I can get. And whoop, boom, boom. Well, the good news, we managed to destroy his rocket launchers. So don't need to worry about that. The bad news, all we've done is piss him off. Because now he's on fire. And he is, well, much more than willing to do some close range fighting now. Not as that, but thanks to the rocket launcher being destroyed, he's more than ready to do that instant kill attack of his. Oh, he, he does have some range attacks. Namely, his technical can be used as a whip now. Ah. Oh, oh, ow! Remember, remember I said my splash damage? Yeah. Oh, by the way... Yeah, Jill's infected! That's actually a first. A playable character actually being infected in the middle of the game. Sure, th th this mechanic is also in Resident Evil Outbreak, but even so, this is the first time that an uh, actual pr protagonist has been infected. Yeah, the folks in Outbreak are just mooks. Well, even so, this is the first time this has ever happened in the series history. Ow! Uh, uh. Oh yeah, let's note this music track. In Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Nemesis is a playable character, and this track was used to represent him. Yeah, known as Unstoppable Nemesis. Whoa! And he can dodge grenades! And what was cool is the fact that uh, that particular this particular theme was turned into a dubstep remix, and it fit perfectly, in my opinion. <laughs> well, I loved it! He's down, but not out. All he did was drop him, but they'll take a few more shots to, to dock him out. Whoop. And remember, now that he's uh, more berserk, He's more than willing to do that instant kill attack. Regard and without even tossing you to the ground even. Whoop. Nope. Yep, he's basically done so, putting up with your crap. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Not imagine I think he also tends to roar more than uh, trying to get instant kill me. There we go. Dude, all that damage, he is really hurt. Guys, there's only so much that he can do to regenerate ya. Yeah. Not the fire it burns! Insert how we scream here. Carlos. Yeah! And Jill's unconscious. Well, it's actually worse. Most folks, they succumb quite quickly. Jill. The ones who don't Jill. usually have the genetic template compatible for a tyrant. You and I are just extremely lucky that they don't turn right away. Jill! Jill! And thus, time skip. October 1st, night. Yep, October 1st. I woke up to Past midnight. Rain. After, it's now after I the events of Resident Evil 2. So that's Claire, Leon, and Sherry have already left the city quite some time ago. And Carlos has been at Jill's side for the past two days. Uh, Meanwhile, uh, uh, three adults and a little kid have been running amok in the sewers. Carlos? That's what I just said. It looks like our roles have been I just said they got banned to get the hell out of the city. Don't worry, Jill. This chapter Remember, is safe. Remember, because RE2 takes place on the 29th and the 30th. I know. I've been infected by the virus. Yeah, and surprisingly, you haven't hey, turned yet. Take it but easy. even someone like you has limits. I'm okay. Don't feel any pain. But that's what bothers me. If I can't feel anything, then what does that mean? Let's not get don't carried away up, here. Joe, I'll take care of you. Means you're gonna turn Whatever into a 103. Don't let that virus beat you. Well, actually, the, the process by which a 103 if is created, it's a bit a zombie, more complicated. Don't hesitate. Resident Evil Survivor uh, reveals how they're created. Kill me. I might as well say it now since I'm not going to cover Survivor. More or less, uh, a chemical in the, in the brains of uh, adolescent, uh, adolescent young people. More or less, uh, that, the chemical in those brains 
they're it, they're vital towards creating 103s. But I think so it, they but went it, around swiping teens and harvesting their noodles. Yeah, pretty much from all around the world. However, here's the catch. Uh, I think it was uh, beta heterodon serotonin. I think it was called this chemical that a brother discovered. And the thing is, you can't get a good amount of it from dead brains. And you can't. So they have to uh, milk them like cattle, probably no, keeping them on drugs. No, no. Anesthetics won't, won't, won't only hinder its effectiveness. So yeah, more or less, they had to carve out their brains while they're still alive. Yeah. Uh. And just to harvest that chemical, so that uh, 103s can be mass produced. Because in Survivor, you end up at a place where one, at least one of the places where 103s are mass produced, which actually does show why uh, you find so many 103s in that game. Yeah, for once, it's not only it's not just one. Oh, by a comrade, he must have fought to complete his mission to his final breath. But yeah, I think that's the, that in itself is nightmare fuel. The fact that their brains are their chemical is extracted from their brains while they're alive. Hannibal Lecter doped up a street urchin and ate his frontal lobe on camera in one of the Silence of the Lambs movies. But like I said, they can't get that chemical, you know, in its purest form while they're under anesthetics. No, this was an anesthetics. This was just I know, I know. opiates or something. I know. I'm just saying that Umbrella couldn't use any kind of drugs to, 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 to more or less dampen the pain. Yeah. Well, I'm sure, Survivor's not that good of a game, but damn, it does not have nightmare fuel moments like that. Sure, you don't get to see it, but the fact that it was described in files. Yeah. Not just not, not, not the antagonist himself was a monster. Anyway, welcome to Raccoon General Hospital. Apparently, uh, we're about to meet some old friends. Hunters! Oh, fun. These guys are beta hunters! They're not as durable as their alpha cousins, but... They're... I guess you could say they are far more dangerous. Well, they're... The alphas are bred to be foot soldiers. Yeah, the betas are more like, again, they're weaker, and yet they're also stronger. They're glass cannons, compared to the uh, jack-of-all-stats alphas. Quite. Because, yeah, you got you, you got your alphas, they have about the intelligence of a domestic animal. They can take orders, uh, recognize friend from foe, and they're pretty tough fighters. These betas? They're dumb animals. No, they're not dumb. They're, they're not dumb, it's just that they're just... You know, they're more frail than alphas are. And that is that, but there's also other breeds of hunters. Such as in Resident Evil Outbreak, in um, Bergen's Laboratory, there were some experimental hunters that were created. They're smaller than your typical alphas, but they're, they're, they're still just as deadly. Hmm. Yeah, this is a, a diary from a doctor. They're already dead. Disease is unlike anything I've ever witnessed. Once the patient's mind is gone, they become flesh hungry monsters who act like wild animals who are on some type of bloodlust. <laughs> Fuse let these patients become zombies. But yeah, there's those kinds of hunters in Outbreak. And the thing is, in Outbreak File 2, there's a scenario where you're pretty much working together with a couple of umbrella researchers who aren't evil, mind you. But that's demands to, uh, control a 103, and that 103 is used to take out the hunters that are in that facility. That's kind of cool, having a 103 on your side. For, t uh, t temporarily, because if, if you're in the way of its punches, you will get hurt. And of course, eventually, the, that 103, well, it rebels. What, does it go super form and become uncontrollable? No. I think it, it does go into arm form. It's just uh, one, of, one of the researchers managed to fit a little explosive on the base of its neck. But that could actually, if you use the, the remote, the remote detonator, you can knock it out in one one shot. However, 
it's, it's a one-time thing. And that, and that tyrant is what it can be is fought not only in its base form but also in its R form throughout that scenario. <laughs> but yeah, in, in, in the scenario known as End of the Road. There also appears to be a slight fracture in his right arm just below the elbow. However, however, it allows us to a oh, access the elevator. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> that is obviously pretty cool. The fact that you have a tyrant on your side for a change, killing hunters. I remember reading a uh, fic way back in the 90s where some associate of Jill's had actually managed to catch Nemesis before wet right after it was released into the city and reprogram it into her bodyguard. Yikes. Huh. <laughs> oh. Gunshots. Nikolai! How the hell did you survive that explosion? Unharmed even. So what happened? What's going on? I'm one of the supervisors. That's all you need to Because know. as far as he's concerned, he's already dead. Wait! Oh, was this? Ooh! Grenade! Uh oh. Run away! Whee! <laughs> <laughs> did he jump out or did he get blown out? He jumped out just as the grenade went off. Did I see anything outside? The thing is, uh, that guy who just killed himself, if you went down to the basement first, he'll more run into you and he'll warn you about Nikolai being a traitor. Hmm. So yeah, Nikolai claimed he was one of the <clears throat> supervisors, whatever that is. Photo D. The zombies are walking. It says the effect of the T-virus on the backside. Yeah, pretty much in this hospital, we can find a vaccine for Jill. Okay, sick room key. It's, the, it's tag says 402. Oh yeah, I've never got to mention Carlos's weaponry. He has a Sig Pro SP2009 pistol, and his bread and butter weapon, the M4A1 tactical assault rifle. Limited ammo, but oh, baby, does it hurt? Well, not exactly. It's it's what you expect from an automatic weapon. High capacity, low firepower. It's best, obviously, it's best to be used um, sparingly. Well, that'll cut down the zombies pretty quickly. Yeah. Sure. Well, especially if you're going full auto. So this seems to be a place here. Oh, he's holding a slip. 104. Okay. Any sliding worms, obviously, are the offspring of the grave digger. So, yeah. Uh, what's up? You won't get any ammo as Carlos for the assault rifle, but on easy mode, when you're whether you're playing as Jill or Carlos, you will get extra ammo for the assault rifle. Roughly one or two extra magazines. But yeah, that room was more or less a hint to solve uh, a puzzle. Because uh, you may notice there was a little uh, cabinet thing in the corner of the room. Well, there's one just like it in this room. It's right over there. So yeah, more or less, you gotta make it uh, put it in, the, in the, the reverse position of how it looked in the other room. Otherwise, you get a little slight electric shock and you gotta redo the whole thing. Okay. So yeah, more or less, since it was in uh, to Carlos's left when he entered the other sick room, this one's gonna be pushed to his right when he entered. And there we go. Huh, a wall safe. Hmm. Yeah, more or less, uh, that guy that died, he ch Oh, yeah, I kind of... Yeah, I think... I put the reverse of the code. The thing is, the guy that died, more or less, he'll examine a wall safe in the basement, and there's a bomb in there, he gets blown up. But fortunately, he manages to warn Carlos about Nikolai. Let's see. But, since Nikolai caught him upstairs, he didn't need to plant the bomb. No, uh, no, besides, uh, Carlos just saw first hand that Nikolai's a traitor. Hmm. Okay, we got the vaccine base, so let's head to the basement now. See you guys in part eight. <laughs>